Okay, guys, I think we're ready to start the first episode ever of Coffee Break. This is a new MMO segment we're going to be doing here on Merit TV. We're going to be talking about games, talking about the MMOs that we all love, uh, the evolution of the genre, the current state of Guild Wars 2, where it's headed, where it came from, how it's improving, what things still could use some improvement and we have a lot of new things to talk about so welcome everyone my goal will be that we do this periodically uh maybe talk to different streamers throughout the the various weeks to come maybe check in with people about what they're doing uh how their community is shaping up how guild wars 2 is just sort of a forum for people to talk about the game and what's going on with them so uh welcome thank you guys for hanging out the first day of this is going to be myself merrick tv uh juni of course my right hand girl and then uh cryptic villain my right hand man who is about to appear on stream for the very first time ever are you oh no he's, he's gone where'd you go cryptic I, i'm here okay there he is okay all right here we go if anything happens let me know and the nice fade in. What's up, guys? And I'm eating melon. I hope you guys don't mind. You guys know I like melon. He loves his melon. Especially winter melon. I do. I do. All right, guys. So check it out. We're going to be doing this podcast. Your questions are going to be... Um, sifted through and pushed forward by Juni. She's going to be reading the chat and passing them along to us, making sure that we don't miss them. Uh, so if you have any questions or any comments, go ahead and type them out. We'd love to interact with you about that. And at the very end of the stream, which is not going to be that long, it's going to be just a little under two hours, uh, we are going to be giving away the last giant thing that we have to give away on Merrick TV. We're giving away an eternity. And in, in I mean, in case you thought, oh man, uh, winner of eternity, that's not lucky enough. Uh, you're also going to win 150 gold on top of the Eternity. So, exciting things to come, guys. Make sure you sit and hang around until the very end. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to pass it over to Cryptic. He's going to do sort of an introduction, and then we'll kick it off from there. All right. Uh, yeah, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to Coffee Break, our uh, MMO podcast uh, kind of thing. Um unofficially this stream is brought to you by uh yeti mugs uh if you would like to sponsor us feel free <laughs> um, <laughs> no but um uh, one second let me fix that there we go um but yeah so uh my name is cryptic villain as a lot of you guys know uh and below me we've got uh, merrick tv and uh to the right of me uh we've got juniper prime um, I've been playing MMOs for about, uh, about 11 years, I think. Um, and I've played Guild Wars 2 since release on and off. Um, love the MMO genre, uh, love everything about, uh, gaming and MMOs in particular. Um, and we just thought this would be a great place to have like this forum and discussion. Um, so with that, no further ado, I'll introduce my wonderful co-host, uh, Merrick TV. <laughs> um... He is the one, the only, and the brony. Let's not forget that. Uh, he's been playing MMOs uh, since the dawn of the genre, as he likes to put it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's true, yeah, that's true. <laughs> he's a uh, big time Guild Wars 2 streamer. You all know him. You all love him. Uh, and uh, he's definitely one of the best raiders around. So uh, if you want to add anything else to that, Merrick, feel free. What? Uh, yeah, no, thank you for that introduction. I, of course, am Merrick TV. If you guys are here, you probably already know who I am, or you're just here for a legendary giveaway, in which case, I don't blame you. Not one bit. I'd be doing the same exact thing. Uh, I have been playing MMO since what I consider to be the very beginning. I've played, uh, basically since back when EverQuest was around. It has always been my favorite genre. I think that a whole bunch of like, and this is kind of embodied in why I raid. I think a bunch of friends coming together, working in the same fantasy world. It has a very Dungeons and Dragons-esque feeling to it. You know, you play this, I'll play this, you play that. We'll party together and see if we can kill the dragon. Uh, so I've been doing that ever since the beginning and I love it. I love killing the dragon. Uh, poor dragons. So uh, I've played basically every 
almost every AAA MMO launch uh, since the beginning, and I'm still looking at them now. Guild Wars 2, of course, my favorite. Uh, playing favorites a little bit. I definitely love this game. Been playing it since the head start, just before launch, so my eighth birthday is just about to come up. I deleted my first characters because I didn't know how birthdays worked, so I, I didn't actually get the first round of, uh, of birthday gifts, but it's coming pretty soon. And uh, in case you guys aren't tired of hearing it, I met Junie in Guild Wars 2. So, uh, love the genre, love the game. Well, uh, that's awesome and uh, glad glad we're doing this uh, podcast thing. Hopefully it takes off and goes in the right direction. Um, and of course, like I said, to the right of Merrick, below me, uh, is the wonderful, beautiful, and awesome Juniper Prime. Uh, everybody uh, say hi to her. Um, she's been playing Guild Wars 2 since the beginning as well, and has been playing MMOs for a very long time. Uh, so we thought it would be good to have her not only on board with this one and kind of like monitoring the chat and, you know, passing your questions and stuff along with you guys and participating in the conversation. Uh, but also, you know, she's the manager of this, uh, this channel pretty much. She runs Merrick TV a lot with a lot of the other moderators, um, and is the evil mastermind behind all of the memes. So having her here is key, key evil diabolical and yes it is some cantaloupe i'm eating some cantaloupe mm -hmm. oh it's not it's not choya i mean what's the difference really <laughs> is that sure. cantaloupe sure. i think that's winter melon right merrick no it's cantaloupe look at it it's cantaloupe Ah, uh, yeah what uh cryptic said is true like i have been playing guild wars 2 since it first started um it's actually a pretty funny story. I started in October, I waited a couple of months after the game released, and I started playing right before Halloween. So I got to experience the first Halloween event. Uh, and then a hurricane hit New York and I lost power for three months. So I wasn't able to play the game for three more months and I missed the first Christmas. But, um, but then no, no, no. ever since then, I've been playing ever since with just a short break, a little bit before I came back and met Merrick. So crazy times. Yeah. Well, we're definitely very glad to have you here. Um, I guess before we get into it, there's a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, let me bring up some of the notes here. Um, uh, so first thing we wanted to talk about was, of course, NADL. Uh, if you're not a part of NADL, feel free to join. The more the merrier. Um, it's basically the NA version of Delusional Elitist. Uh, somebody can ping that in chat or- uh, There it is. Yeah, awesome. Um, there's a few upcoming events with uh, uh, NADL. I think Wednesdays, Pang is doing a raid training. Um, Thursday, Pang is doing some raid clears, so you probably need some XP people for that. Uh, and then I'm doing a raid training on Friday. Um, if you're in the guild, you can look what? at the exact times and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, or PM any of us, ask in the chat. Um, we've got some weekly events. I think these are like recurring events to go on all the time, though. Uh, we've got guild missions with Pang on Monday. That's at 8.30. Uh, Tuesday, we've got uh, raid training with Pang again. Um, at that 9 p.m. Yeah, Pang. He's... Mm -hmm. Legend. Works. Yeah. Uh, Monday, we have a, uh, here, a Heart of Thorns uh, hero point train uh, with Pet. Uh, I'm not sure who that is, but that sounds like some awesome fun. Harlequin Pet? Oh, Harley Quinn pet. Okay, now that makes sense. Yeah, I know exactly oh, what it is. Uh, awesome. The stream is questioning, what is delusional elitist, says Mela and Zentris. Says Mela and Zentris? Uh, well, I'm so glad that you guys asked. Listen, guys, delusional elitists, uh, abbreviated as DL, not DE, started off as a stream team in Guild Wars 2. The biggest, best, coolest, and most handsome uh, streamers in, uh, in Guild Wars 2 came together to make sort of a... A, uh, an official Twitch stream team, but since then, and just recently, it has evolved to being a giant community movement. Now, I know this is gonna sound like a pitch, but we have really big stuff planned for this, and it is really exciting. I, I myself, am a member of the stream team, but from that has developed not just a community Discord, uh, not just a guild in EU, but a guild in NA as well. And so I'm actually heading up the NADL, the North American DL division, uh, we have our own guild, our own guild hall. It's a huge uh, coming together of content creators and also just community members that want to get involved. Drum up some 
community events and excitement around the game. I think the one thing that we can all sort of agree on is that Anet is not, you know, uh, they're busy, they're small, they've had a lot of stuff happening. They're not maybe the best at, uh, uh, at uh, like bringing together people to do big community events and also pitching their game, right? The advertising for Guild Wars 2 not really the best so you'll hear two pots say that a lot a lot of us are trying to basically make the community a more active involved and excited place uh and it started on eu but now we're really trying to make it happen in na as well and if i do say so myself the guild that is forming up around all of the amazing nadl organizers uh is just becoming incredible um i might be biased but i think we're the best I also think because of Enko, we're going to be the, the max level guild hall first. Just going to say that. Just going to throw that out there. Oh, yes. That's going to be one amazing New Year's Eve party when we oh, yeah. get max level guild hall. Big stuff, guys. Big stuff. So, so honestly, uh, you'll hear people pitching it all the time, but it is what you're going to make it. Uh, I want people who want to get involved. I want people who want to make the community a better place. I don't think that you should just have to be a hardcore raider or like a really tough pvp or if you're new to the game but you want to be involved uh that's great as well so we're not just doing raids and world v world we're doing fashion shows we're doing uh raffles we're doing uh, like open world uh meta event races that anyone can participate in shadowin is doing that giant uh uh dragon stand thing next week and then just things like hero point trains like you heard cryptic just say so you want to get involved in a big community with a bunch of people and streamers that you can watch and interact with every day Join DL. Place to be. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, 100%. And we also are doing the World v. World thing on Saturday, uh, 7.30. I think Alpha's running that. So check that out. Um, oh, and uh, there's the NADL raffle uh, that uh, Nuzzle Nuzzlebutt. Butt's running. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, That's big... open today, actually. Yep. Just open today, big gold prizes. Obviously, you got to put a little gold to get uh, a lot of gold out, but put some gold in and you win. You could get, I think, what the number one prize is, like 50% of the pot. It's a lot. Yeah, which could be so. big. And you can uh, you can buy a single ticket for as little as 50 silver. It doesn't have to be uh, anything really big. And there is a maximum of 20 gold, I think, 40 tickets. So, uh, you know, don't feel like you, you can't get in because people are going to buy it out. So it's going to be pretty good. Pretty good. Awesome. Uh, one quick thing, I'm actually watching the stream as well. I, I think Yolo Mouse is like copied over to stream elements. It's like covering my face occasionally. <laughs> I know nobody wants to see my ugly mug, but uh... right. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test what? it out. We are all <laughs> here for Cryptic Space Reveal. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is that is that happening? Uh, yeah. No, but I think it's because you clicked off at Guild Wars. I think Yolo Mouse only shows up when you're on Guild Wars. It's weird. It's like oh, there we go. Yeah, and I like pick Cryptic's nose or. Hold yeah, on. you, you oh, were just buddy. over. Yeah. I'm working on it. It's a delay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, so, guys, while this is happening in the background, we're going to talk about a lot of different topics, but just make sure to get in that giveaway because it's really, really big. We are indeed giving away an eternity at the end of the stream, and the stream's not even going to be that long, so you might have a really good shot at winning it. We just really wanted to introduce this forum uh this kind of dialogue with everybody because there's a lot of stuff going on in guild wars 2 right now all right uh and with that uh let's dive into our first topic um so the first thing and this is also a little bit of news but first thing we probably should talk about is the rating league coming back right um mm. and i see roca in the chat guys uh, so I, I, I guess I should start by saying that while it feels like the Rating League is coming back, the Rating League never went anywhere. It was actually not gone, uh, but part of the big problem with the Rating League is however ambitious it was, however amazing an idea it is, and it really is, right? Like, we loved the ARP, and the most recent ERP was maybe the biggest event that Guild Wars 2 has ever seen in history. I mean, it was like... I think they said 15-ish thousand people watching that at the exact same time. So it was huge. Everyone loved it. I think most of us raiders saw like an influx of raiding happening right after the ERP. So this kind of like, what it is is a structured raiding competition environment that happens every month. But my guess is, is that a lot of people who are here, a lot of people who uh, are hearing about Raid League for the first time right now never had ever gotten any glimpse of it before. I think one of the big problems with it was the only people who knew about Raid League were inside Guild Wars 2 Raiding League already. 
So what this is, is sort of like an exciting rebranding. There's going to be, there's a brand new website. So it's structured a lot differently, a lot better. Uh, they're pulling in a lot of uh, streamers, personalities, big, awesome uh, community members like Roka, like Mela, like Deaxon. Uh, and then the secret, the secret one, I guess is not secret anymore, but, but Mighty Teapot himself, guys, is getting involved in this. And you know he gets stuff done, so it's pretty exciting. There's going to just be a lot more attention on it soon. The uh, the um, my hope is that we'll get to watch the attempts live, and then there's going to be shout casting involved as well. So I will be involved in that. There's like a a, a number of streamers who have come together to hype it up and to be involved, and so I will be. You'll see uh, you'll see this pink guy somewhere involved in the raid tournament soon. Lots of exciting stuff. Yeah, I was about to say, you can't leave out the brony, right? So. Oh, no, you can. You absolutely could. You could have. Yeah, did I not make that, like, uh, in my contract for showing up on this this podcast? No, the B oh, word. The yeah, B word is B -word. banned. B word is banned. <laughs> we'll have to update your contract later. Don't worry. We'll we'll look at it. Uh, but, yeah, there's a Gold League and Silver League, right? So, um, and it's not... Uh, it's also not something that's like completely out of people's reach. I mean, obviously, it's not for newbie like newbie raiders, but uh, once you get some experience under your belt, you might be able to find yourself one like one of the silver teams or something. So exactly, definitely like pay attention to it, check it out, and if you like really love raiding, it might be like the next step for you. Uh, oh, I have to turn. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I gotta get the bot on. Again, not sponsored by Yeti Mugs, but we could be. But could be. That would be cool. Yeah, could be sponsored by Anet too. Uh, I don't know. There was like a there was like a weird leak that happened on stream where somebody said that Anet themselves might even be involved in some way, shape, or form with the raid league, dude. So I don't know if that's actually true, if it'll actually happen. But I didn't say it. It was said by somebody else. So it might be wow. uh, might be exciting, man. Yeah, no, that's that's big news. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. hopefully it comes. Hopefully it turns out to be true because, like, we really need Anet to get involved with these kind of things. So yeah, yeah, we do. We absolutely do. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on to topic two. We're gonna go through a f these first couple ones pretty quickly because I have a feeling the ones at the end are really gonna be like long nail biters. Um, nail so biters. <laughs> maybe not nail biters, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, so let's talk about uh, a little bit of old news here. Um, uh, Summit playing uh, Guild Wars 2. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that was a huge, huge event for uh, Guild Wars. Um, and uh, One quick interjection while you do that, yeah. if you don't mind. Uh, I, I think there is a package that was just delivered to the house. I'm going to go check what that is. Oh, wait, what? Oh, wow. They say I have to sign for it or something? This is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, while Junie does I don't, that, I don't like the sound of that at all. I, like, I don't like the sound of that at all. She gave I'm me a thrilled. weird look on the way out. I don't I'm know. thrilled. I, okay. I have no idea what it is, but I'm thrilled. <laughs> um, uh, so Summit. Yeah, Summit. Uh, so yeah, Summit, uh, he played some Guild Wars 2 for, what, about a week? Maybe a little less than that? Mm -hmm. About five, six days. Um, he didn't seem to leave Guild Wars 2 for, I guess we can get into that a little bit later, but leave it for another MMO per se. Uh, but um, like, obviously, like, what do you think about how that impacts the game and uh, uh, the streaming content and stuff like that in general? Uh, all right, so obviously that was an enormous deal for the game. Uh, you heard me say a little bit earlier that I think one of the Guild Wars 2's biggest issues is not that they don't have a product worth selling, but that they don't sell the product. At least not very well, or have not at least adapted to some of the alternate ways that uh, games get attention, right? You hear, uh, if you guys watch Mighty Teapot at all, you'll hear him say often that it's really frustrating that Anet does not engage more with its streaming community, or that there aren't Twitch drops. Please, Anet, give us Twitch drops, that would be the best. Um, and trying to like lure specific content creators to Guild Wars 2. And if you ever needed proof that that actually was going to make a difference, Summit was it. I mean, this a single person came to our game, a single streamer came to Guild Wars 2 for a very brief period of time. And among just seeing new people in the chat, seeing the starting zones fill up a little bit more, what we saw was a lot of streamers, including Mighty Teapot, get almost double uh, and sometimes even more the average viewer that was coming in before. And so we don't need 
any more anecdotal proof to see that that was an enormous spotlight on our game, on our community in general. Uh, everyone knew that it was sort of a big deal. They were afraid of scaring him off. I, I don't think that anyone really expected Summit to be like, oh my gosh, this is the game I've been missing. We're gonna, I'm gonna stay here forever. I'll play this for life. Like I knew that wasn't gonna happen, but what I do, <laughs> the yellow mouse really does just stick on your face. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I knew from the beginning that we, what we should be doing is trying to take advantage of it while it was there. What it was was just a giant magnifying glass on Guild Wars 2 in a game that doesn't magnify itself very often. Uh, and it really did work. I mean, even people, what, what was going to happen is like, he's going to come and play and be like, ah, I like this, I don't like this, this is dumb. Like, the kind of streamer that Summit is, you know, he's a cool dude. He's, a, he's an absolutely epic content creator, but... I knew that it was going to shine both bad and good on it. However, if you've got 30,000 people watching a game, even if someone goes, ah, oh, this is lame, and then leaves, somebody's going to go, you know what? I actually liked what I saw. I'm going to play it for a little while. And uh, and we saw that. I actually, I wish we had an ANET employee to be able to tell me, you know, like how many people stuck around. Like how, how big of a boost was that? Because at least on Twitch, we could say that it absolutely was. I saw an average of 20 plus viewers go up on like every every of the like consistent streamers that we see. And Teapot, who had such an epic interaction with Summit while he was here, skyrocketed, man. And of course he deserves it. I was in Summit's chat, guys. Were you in there that first day? I was screaming, Teapot, Teapot, you need to talk to Teapot, not this whoever that random guy was that he was talking to that was getting all sorts of misinformation about the game, but yeah. It's it's big, man. I mean, it was it was big. It's gone now, but I I I think that there's momentum that we're working with, and it's great that the game had so many other announcements to make, like Cantha, while we've had some extra people here. You know, it's it's exciting. Yeah, you could argue it came at a pretty good time, right? Like um, it was a bit of a lull for Guild Wars 2, and then we had a bunch of these events and stuff come out that we'll talk about later. But um, you know, it kind of like inserted it inserted this boost into the community at the right time to build us up to Cantha and stuff like that. Um, yep. And uh, on top of that, um, uh, you know, it obviously shone a light on streamers. And I think we can see, you know, you were questioning like it would be nice to have an Enet employee be able to tell us the. Um, the boost that, yeah, it, the that the game got but i think it equally the sh from what we've seen with streams like people generally watch what they want to play a lot of times i think um and you can if we've seen this boost to streamers i think it, it's fair to say like there was probably a similar boost to the game sure yeah I, I would expect that that's true and if you heard my stream while he was here i was just saying listen guys leave him alone okay he's, he's not gonna be here for long he'll mm -hmm. probably be here for a few days but Instead of like going to starting zones and annoying Summit, go to starting zones and start welcoming new players. You guys remember when? Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna feel really bad because I don't remember what it was. Was it was it Peon dude? Was it Lazy Peon? When somebody mm -hmm. somebody did like this huge boost for Guild Wars 2, all of a sudden by like doing a review of the game and coming back and oh it was the game. What uh, chat? Help me out. What was the MMO that came out that everyone was so hyped about and it failed miserably? It had the worst release ever. And everyone joked that it served as to be like the best uh, advertisement for Guild Wars 2 that we ever saw. Blessed Online. Blessed Online. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Blessed Online. So we saw this happen before, right? And it was an amazing thing to see. I don't know if you guys were around. I don't know if you remember it happening, but I was going to starting zones and not just seeing this enormous influx of brand new players, but I was seeing the best of the best of our community sitting there with the apples over their heads, right? Everyone's got their, their, uh, their, um, they're not commander tags, but you know what I mean? The, the apple tag, just answering questions, welcoming players, and then serving as like this big welcoming committee to all these new people, mentor tag. Uh, and that was huge. That was a big boost for the game. And again, something that we saw a tangible physical impact from that was not technically caused by anything that Guild Wars 2 or Anet did on purpose. <laughs> and then uh, and then we were able to sort of take it and run with it a little bit, and it was nice to see. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I was hoping similar things would happen with Summit. I feel like just his presence was enough to give us the same kind of boost. Um, but, you know, whenever you have a streamer, there's going to be, like, that harassment sniping stuff. And I'm yeah. not really sure what Anet could have done better in that situation to, uh, like curtail that kind of behavior but um i think in the end we did get a good 
a good return on, uh, I guess, Teapot's investment. <laughs> uh, the ambassador, speaking of which, uh, I, I saw you to ambassador, you. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Was that what that noise was? That's what that noise was. That was Teapot rating. Yo, Teapot, man. I, yo, he just came into the chat as we're talking about him, man. The mightiest of Teapots. Listen, uh, you know, all of us streamers, we all know each other. We interact, we collaborate, especially in DL, delusional elitist. But uh, this experience, I think, like I said, uh, the interaction with, uh, with Summit and how that ended up being a, a positive one uh is so impacted by mighty teapot i think he does more for the community and for the game than people realize i know at least for my stream as well so it's uh it's big dude this is this is exactly what i think dl is is about is getting people together and sort of looking past themselves and just trying to do what's best for the game and for the community at the end of the day guys we're playing an mmo one of many we all love this game and this game is small this is actually a small game, like, our impact on the community, on the success of the game is measurable. It's not World of Warcraft, you know, it's not like you can only impact this game if you're Asmund Gold. When people come to the game and see positive things, they, pee, they see positive community interaction, um, and that kind of stuff, it makes a big difference, it's going to make a lasting difference. So, on that note though, do you think, uh, like... Do you think that the new player experience is like in an acceptable state or is there things that need to be changed to improve it? Like personally, um, uh, obviously Summit's a very like PVP driven person. So his new player experience is going to be drastically different than uh, a lot and of other was. players. Yeah. And it was um, on top of the streaming thing being, a you know, getting sniped and all that. Um, but I, I still have my concerns that perhaps some of the, you know, the older content is not, uh, obviously it's still very, uh, like if you look at like, and we'll get into like the other MMOs later. But other MMOs uh, really have, uh, you know, we've been playing WoW, New World, stuff like that. The intro mm -hmm. can be some of the hardest to get over the, the hump, right? Yeah. Um, Guild Wars 2, it throws this, you know, epic story with full, fully voice acted right in your face, and it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, but if the story doesn't catch you, do you think that it just, it's a deadpan, it just falls out underneath you uh, if you're not, if you're not interested in the story, right? I mean, that that's a really good question, and I think that uh like introduction to an mmo like your very first steps into a world is such an important aspect of it right we can all say wow that's still so loud thank you uh, is there more fluffy unicorns around his face than there was before or guys could, <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have like a, another topic about this at the end of the stream because i have a lot more to say about it but yeah, the, uh, the mainly the Junie's a huge bully and none of this is my fault. Uh, I know that it might look like I'm asking for it when you're staring at the back of my character right now and it's not going anywhere. Um, here, I'll just zoom in. Okay, so yes, the introduction to a world in an MMO is maybe the most important step of the entire game. It has to be able to catch that player right off the bat. It's not just story involvement, but the way that the combat evolves, the way that the... Uh, where the game drops you in and how quickly you're caught. I do really love that Guild Wars 2 is fully voice acted in its cutscenes, right? Like in the way that it introduces the story, it's really good. I've recently played a bunch of other MMOs. We played ESO, we played World of Warcraft, we played um, New World this last week. So I get to see how the different games do it. The fact that PvP and World v. World are alternative ways to, to not just play the game, but also to level like, I think most of us felt, at least, I'll just say most of us in the PvE corner of the world uh, found ourselves like, like, oh, you know, Summit, don't quit just because you got wrecked by a bunch of, like, uh, tryhards in PvP trying to stream snipe you. Go and play the actual game, you know? Like, go do a go do a story, go do a, you know, get up there and do a fractal, you know? Do, do, do some of the stuff that we know that's good that's later in the game. Um... But I, I do feel like I want to give credit where credit's due, because I just, I don't know if you guys watched the stream yesterday, I made my very first brand new character for the first time in years, really, uh, that I actually leveled up. And so I'm in Metrica Province doing this hardcore playthrough, uh, and sort of en enjoying the, uh, just the regular introduction to the game. And I think it's really solid. I, I, I genuinely do. I think compared to other games, the questing system is open and free. The stories are engaged and consistent. There's a lot of things for veteran players to complain about with Guild Wars 2, and they're all valid. But when I hear a veteran jaded 
grumpy player who's been playing the game for forever that's like, Wee, there's no content. Uh, when they say that to a brand new player who's coming in on Reddit thinking like, should I play Guild Wars 2? Should I try it? The, the truth is, is that they're robbing that player of what I think is a really good experience. You've got a solid, at least years worth of content to go through. And I'm jealous of players who get to come to the game now and play it for the first time. I don't know if you guys can remember the first character you ever leveled. I loved this game. I mean, the whole experience was rewarding and fun. You unlock new stuff as you go really consistently, and that's exciting to play around with the systems that you're handed. So I, th I think it's done well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been playing some New World recently, obviously, like you said, uh, and some WoW. Um, and the, uh, you know, the intro, especially like the story, just does not grab you. WoW's different, obviously, but uh, uh, WoW's story tends to grab people. But New World, for sure, like the setting was so interesting and so... Um, you know, different from anything else that any other MMO has. Uh, but then getting into the actual story, just, I, I had, it was impossible for me. Like the wall of text was so uninteresting and could not provide any context to what was really going on. Um, and uh, you who actually like read all of it line for line for line also kind of I felt did. similarly, right? Uh, I, I did. In fact, I want to stop you there and replay what you said a moment ago. Did you say that people do get into the story of WoW? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know you You guys are big. I mean, even me who hasn't played WoW, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, just, just a little bit. I know more about the story of WoW than I think I'll ever know about New World, um, even, like, going forward with New World, right? Like, Yeah, and, and I, I agree with you in the fact that World of Warcraft accomplishes something that no other MMO could even dream of coming close to. First of all, the game's been around for, what is it, 15 years, something like that, some ridiculous amount of time. Uh, they, the franchise has been around for much longer. Warcraft 1, 2, and 3 have been building a story since uh, before some of the people in this chat were even born. There's been numerous hundreds of, uh, seemingly hundreds, of novels filling out the story for all this stuff. And the raid content at the end does play through story that feels tangible. However, since we are specifically talking about like the new player experience in World of Warcraft, I think that the story is the most far removed from uh, the player in, Guild, in in World of Warcraft than it is in any other MMO that we could discuss. Like you said, there's this giant bricks of text uh, from the very beginning that have nothing to do with the overarching story of the game. Like you, before you get to what you feel like is an overarching world story experience, it's like, oh, you know, uh, Zaitans is about to destroy Tyria. Like we know that from the very beginning of the of the game, right? Or yeah. at least, or at least uh, like an engaging story that has you. Uh, following along from the very beginning. Nothing is, is following you along in uh, in the Barrens, you know, or when you're first making a character in uh, Elwyn Forest or whatever, you're like, I'm gonna go and, and kill some scarecrows. I mean, it's so, what, 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 what? What have you done? Ours dared me to poke you on oh. camera. Okay, well, she's <laughs> got a very long arm. We're actually that far apart in real life. Uh, this is about a 12, 12 foot gap, and she she managed it. So she uh, that was pretty Amazing. impressive. Well, yeah. your arm is showing up in my camera, so we're all good there. Yeah. So um. Now quote well, cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quote no. cryptic. Uh, but I mean, like, so so I do agree with what you're saying. I think like giant bricks of text with no voice acting, um, can be discouraging for players, or at least at least have facilitated this. A uh, consistent trend of MMO players just ignoring all story, right? Like, you know, you're not judging the game by its story anymore. Most players who come from WoW are just used to skipping everything. And that's just sort of a big part of the experience in the game. And that, that sucks. I mean, I, I don't think that that's actually great. So if that's the way the storytelling is going to go in New World, where it's, again, giant bricks of text, and they're not really saying anything, right? Because we just did that whole playthrough of it the other day. And there's no... There's no tangible story really to speak of, so. And yeah. You have Starbucks and I don't. You do have Starbucks. Look to your left. Oh my gosh. I do have Starbucks. You didn't tell me. Oh, it's not cauliflower. It's Starbucks. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Wait one second. So I didn't want to interrupt because this was an amazing, in depth, incredible uh, discussion. I didn't want to, like, you know, split it up for everybody listening. But, uh, Marek, there is a lot of cauliflower in the front of the door now. Like, there is so much. I've brought up as much as I could carry. Real life cauliflower? 
Yes, but I only could bring up like three bags. This stuff is heavy. Who so has here, done this? I'm delivering this to you right now. Anko. Someone throw something at Anko. Where's Anko? No, Anko! Oh my, that's, that's a lot of cauliflower. And that's, is that just what you managed to bring up, Judy? <laughs> this is just what I managed to bring up the staircase. There's more. Oh, oh Mary my goodness. Take this. Um, Anko? <laughs> no, there's not more than this! Yes! This is, just <laughs> iceberg. this is just what he's managed, which he's managed to bring up the stairs, too. So, there's more of this waiting outside for you. <laughs> Actually, all cauliflower, or is there something else in there? Cat cabbages? I'm gonna guess that it's all cauliflower. I'm just gonna guess that this is all cauliflower. Anko, the apocalypse is supposed to be a virtual experience. <laughs> How did you get real life cauliflower to my house? They put water bottles in this bag, maybe to keep the cauliflower cold. Free, free water bottles? So sorry to interrupt the uh. <laughs> no worries. The, uh, the podcast. You go. You keep going. You keep going. We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. Seems like you've got a bit of a, an issue on your hand. <laughs> uh, this is fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep this here. I'm just gonna keep this here with me. What? Uh, we'll go off topic for a little bit. What? What do you actually plan on doing with all this cauliflower? I mean, I feel like at this point, donating it might be the the best solution <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think you could eat all that. I don't even eat cauliflower. <laughs> I legitimately, I'm not even eating broccoli. Clearly, now you do eat cauliflower. <laughs> All right, um, that's enough. I just, I'm just drowning the cauliflower. They can't even see me now. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's there's more of this fine. downstairs, right, Junie? Oh yes, there's so much <laughs> of this. And go. Oh, I'm gonna get you back somehow someday. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, about MMOs. Uh, anyway, <laughs> about about MMOs. Um, so yeah, I mean, we were talking about New World with uh, the, the the wall of text. I, I I really hope that they realize that not only is that like a dated way of telling story, but um, like you you mentioned like oh uh, uh, if an MMO doesn't have a story or the story is lackluster or not presented in a great way. People, uh, you know, a good portion of people probably won't judge the MMO on the, the story itself. You know, they're more concerned about the gameplay and the end game and stuff like that. Um, uh, I I feel like we've gotten to the point, and Guild Wars is a huge reason of that, but like ESO as well, that story is a pivotal part of an MMO, right? Like, uh, and WoW with new expansions, like story is a big part of that. Um, I'd be very, uh, like, I would, I would judge uh, New World incredibly harshly if this is the story that they roll out with. Um, and so I, and I think they know that, right? Like, uh, it was announced recently that um, New World was delayed till 2021. I think like mid 2021 yeah. or something. Which I so, think most people were kind of happy about that they were going to take some extra time. Oh yeah, I hope I would rather it be delayed like two years. Honestly, like there's so many things that we talked about. Like the uh, the combat felt very clunky, right? The story was lackluster. Just the movement felt like you were a stick figure being puppeted throughout the world, right? Um, it did not. And there were so many great things uh, to look forward to. Um, the setting expanding into like a more, uh, which it already looked fantastic, but expanding into like a more, uh, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, new world, like uh, exploration kind of thing, um, a uh, col colonialization kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I feel like it, there's a lot, still a lot to be desired and I'm even concerned that even if they do fix the issues, I think it'll be a success if they fix the issues. I'm concerned that because of the delay, um, it may be too late for New World to be the next leading MMO, right? Like they may be in the background behind 
uh, I mean, maybe not behind Guild Wars 2, but behind, you know, WoW, which is always going to be a staple. And if you've heard, Ashes of the Creation, which is coming out soon. Yeah, there's a lot of hype around that as well. Yeah, a lot of hype. And they are, uh, if you've seen in their beta, they are doing a uh, only visual NDA. So anything that you see and do and play in the beta, you can talk about with anyone. The cauliflower pulled out Marek's headphones. One moment. Oh, no. Has the cauliflower meme gone too far at this point? I, I don't know. What do you much, think, Chad? Much too far. <laughs> uh, the meme has crossed into reality, guys. This is, uh, this is too extreme. This is too extreme. Uh, what is that mail, Marek? The cauliflower is here. Cauli, 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 cauliflower. I am so anyway, scared. Yeah. Is well, that is, is that, that one of Enko's like twenty five accounts? I'm not gonna open any more. I'm not gonna open any more. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, 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 I I do agree with you. I think there are some elements of New World that could use to be improved, and I'm glad that they're taking the time. I should say that immediately. Um, my my take on that game so far is that it has a lot of things to work with. I'm I'm gratified that I actually have the ability to play it when it comes out. We have pre-ordered the game. I will be trying it. You spoke a little bit about some of the things that I think are incredible about it. I, I love its setting, first of all. If you guys have not already seen the setting of, uh, of New World, it is jaw-dropping. I think the atmosphere, the immersion, the color use. Um, I was talking with Mela about this the other day, that the, the, the richness of style and color are similar in a way to Guild Wars 2, that it's really um, thematic in a way that might age well. You know, like Guild Wars 2 does not have great graphics. It's not like you're you're falling out of your chair uh, impressed with the way the Guild Wars 2 looks, but it's so colorful and stylized in such a cohesive way that it feels like stylistic choices rather than it's been upgraded or downgraded or it's been outdated. Uh, and those, that's uh, something that's really important, I think, for Guild Wars 2. I got a similar feeling from from uh, from New World, and it's it's world that you play through is so uh, immersive that I think I can forgive a lot of other things. Like I wasn't really caring about the story so much as I was running through the forest, just baffled by the size and scope of the forest itself, the size of the trees, the depth of the foliage, and harvesting all the stuff from it. I saw people chopping down trees that were actually falling. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's incredibly cool. So, and it, the resource, um, like, you know, like people complain in MMOs, like Guild Wars has kind of fixed, uh, that issue, uh, in a lot of MMOs where, you know, like you, the things you loot, the resources you get are yours only. And like, or, you know, you take them and you take them from other players. So you get it and now they can no longer do it. I feel like it yeah. actually, it, they, uh, uh, New World has found a way to take that, which was a problem that seemed like very few MMOs had solved and not made it in, in a way that it doesn't need to be solved. Like, um, you know, seeing that tree fall down and it being gone, at least for a short period of time, is actually really awesome, right? You yeah. you don't feel like you've been robbed. You feel like, oh, look, that, that guy just harvested a tree. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it actually blew my mind. I was sitting inside of a town. I looked out. I was actually telling the stream, look at this, uh, look at this landscape. Look how beautiful this is. And I watched one of the trees fall uh, from yeah. somebody chopping it. That was an incredibly cool and immersive experience. I, 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 I love that. Also, I think the setting that they chose is a bold one. If you guys have not already played New World, the uh, I think I was stunned when I got in there to find that there was magic and wizards and zombies and things that you would experience in a fantastical MMO uh, because I was expecting it to be truly real. And the reason why I think I was so uh, shocked at that was because I've never seen a game set in I've never seen a game with wizards and magic systems set in a uh, an environment that is not fantasy. Uh, yeah, medieval fantasy. Medieval mm -hmm. fantasy. So what this game is set in is more along the lines of what you would expect John Smith and Pocahontas to be yes, around. Yeah. You know, which was a, an altogether different feel, a very specific environment that we're all sort of uh, you know we we recognize it. Uh, and like the log forts and stuff that you're coming up to, like it feels really cool, but I've never seen 
the game like that. Do you expect me to keep? You want me to juggle it on stream? I can't hold any more of this. It feels like it's multiplying. <laughs> um, so, so stop handing it to me. I can't take it. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's I think it's got a lot going for it. My real concern, and I brought this up before, is the the combat system. I I like it in that I believe that the MMO genre as a whole has been desperately trying to move towards a more action-oriented um, system, right? We want it to be more action-based. Yeah. We're not so happy with tab targeting. Um, I think, like, for a long time, we felt really goofy about the fact that if uh, if there's a whole cl clump of mobs in front of me and I swing my sword, uh, somehow I only hit the one that I'm targeting, right? Right, Even though it's directly in front of me with a p pile of other things. Or, mm -hmm. like in World of Warcraft, if someone completes a fireball uh, from, like, 100 yards away and the fireball is coming towards you, but you jump off a cliff and then you teleport across the world to Orgrimmar, and then you hide underneath a, a boat so that no one can see you. It doesn't matter, the fireball's still gonna hit you. It's like the, the actual traveling of the fireball is uh, is a formality. It's already decided that it's gonna hit you, so. Guild Wars 2 has been really good at sort of combining what has always worked about tab targeting combat systems and action-oriented combat. However, when you get into things like uh, and that's a huge compliment to Guild Wars 2, actually. I think Guild Wars 2 has my favorite combat I've ever come across in an MMO. Without a doubt. It's just impossible. Like, it's so hard. I keep going to other games. I'm like, oh, I like this about this MMO. I like this about this one. But I always come back to Guild Wars 2 because of the combat. Yeah, and you know in WoW, um, you know, we've been playing that recently. And there's a lot of things I like about WoW that I never, you know, when I played it the first time, I never thought I'd like. But the thing that made me stop playing WoW, just those first few levels um, back then that I still don't like about it now is the combat. So Guild Wars 2 by far, like it, after playing Guild Wars 2, it's so hard to go to any other MMO. Um, and I, I like that New World is doing that same kind of combat uh, or similar at least, that you know action oriented combat. I just was really hoping, and I know you haven't played this game, Merrick. Um, I'm not sure if you actually even know what it is, but there's a single player game, kind of like you know a Skyrim kind of thing, but it has the exact same setting as New World, like oh, it, almost carbon copy. Um, it's been out for a while. It's called Greedfall. I'm sure the chat knows about it. Um, and mm -hmm. it is obviously it's single player, but it's like very. It's incredibly similar to New World. The only difference I would say is that, other than it being single player, is that the action combat flows so much better. Um, and I was really hoping, like, oh, New World is just going to be the multiplayer version of this, with you know, like uh, uh, building towns and you know, like uh, uh, you know, PvP and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. Do you feel like if they tuned up the combat to be a little more spry, to be a little more responsive, um, and made movement a little more uh, forgiving? Um, that that would solve the problems, or is there like a more deep seated, uh, deep seated gameplay issue here with the way the combat works? Um, I mean that's a good question. I, I want to say that when you get farther away from tab targeting and closer and closer to what I think people immediately attach this to, which is like Dark Souls, right? Like Dark Souls combat. Yeah. Uh, whenever you get into like really action oriented stuff, the absolute enemy of that system are animation locks. The inability to react as fast as you want to becomes really frustrating, even if there's a good reason for it. Even if you're like, oh, you know, you, you just did a thrust and now you're screwed, you have to just finish that thrust until you can block or dodge. Even if that system gets to a point where you're used to it, what it elicits in you is frustration, right? You're like, uh, the mob is coming to hit you and you are stuck. You can't move, you're hitting block, you're hitting dodge, nothing's happening, and so you're kind of stuck. Um, I, I experienced some of that, which is incredibly frustrating, and that would go a long way to fixing it. Uh, the other thing is positioning and targeting. You have uh, skills that are supposed to cleave, you have skills that uh, or like wanting to get everyone in front of you so that you can hit multiple targets and sort of getting your character to turn the way that you want to, face the way that you want to while you're doing these multi-hit things, especially with me. I was using that enormous hammer. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Uh, I had these huge cleave abilities I wanted to use, but I very rarely was able to position myself in a way that could actually hit everything and uh and that was really frustrating so the last thing you want you know it's one thing to have combat be boring and uh at the at the risk of uh of pissing off a bunch of people there are some combat systems that are pretty boring in modern day mmos i, I won't name any but uh but uh, it's a whole other thing for it to be frustrating 
And we do experience some of that in games like Dark Souls, where you're like so mad, right? Uh, but in an MMO, when I was just getting started, I'm trying to appreciate the new things about this game. Uh, really excited to see what the combat is like, especially in a PvP atmosphere, which is what uh, this game is going to be pushing, right? It left me amazed with the world. Uh, just in awe of the atmosphere and immersion. Uh, and actually genuinely concerned for it because of the combat. So we'll see. I think as you level up, you get new skills, you get uh, traits and things. Like, obviously, it's an evolving system. Um, and, and again, uh, everyone should know that this is a game in alpha, basically, right? It's not even open beta yet. So it's um, uh, there's a lot of exciting things to come, I think. But those are my worries. Those are my actual concerns. Yeah, and I guess one last thing on newer before we uh, take it back to Guild Wars. Um, what do you think they need to do marketing-wise to make it, especially now that it's been delayed? Um, like, you know, we were talking about, like, how ArenaNet has failed in the area of marketing and um, community uh, c contribution and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, New World is a new game, but I feel like, uh, again, to bring it to Ashes of Creation, I just found out about Ashes of Creation, by the way. I'm not, like, a big fan of it. Um, but Lazy Peon did a video on it kind of comparing uh, Ashes of Creation and, like, what other, like, you know, what other companies are doing and stuff. Um, and it really does seem like <clears throat> their openness, uh, uh, obviously, it started as a Kickstarter, so they kind of had to go that direction. But their openness has made in, uh, their company and their game a lot more relatable um, as opposed to New World being, you know, Amazon, this big corporation. Uh, if they don't start doing some reach out, it could very well end up being like, you know, the next EA game that nobody wants to play. Um, I, I, I do believe that it being Amazon helps it in the way that it gets the money, but hurts it in the way that uh, we look at it, right? Like when I heard that it was an Amazon game, that shaped my expectations of it. It really did. I was like, oh, well, then you have unlimited money. Let's see what you can do. I, I think I expected uh, absolute perfection. It's hard not to be swayed by the fact that it's a major, major production company that's, uh, that's backing this thing. So there is that. But if you want to know what I think they could do and should do, especially in, uh, in light of them having to push the game back, the uh what they just did was actually great and they should be doing more of those things i think this was great uh, even us in guild wars 2 right like we have a very insular community here in guild wars 2 we all know each other it's very small knit or uh, close knit small people know what's going on but uh the fact that new world did this sort of kicked down the door in our little community and said hey uh do you guys want to talk about uh, New World and it was because they came out with this big thing they allow they allowed everyone not just to play it but to stream it uh, that allows for the kind of um, Advertising for the game that I was talking about interaction with content creators interaction with the internet uh, As a whole the actual players the player base that could be potentially playing your game They're gonna watch streamers like this and so my only real frustration was that I couldn't have OBS capture the window It was like they were trying to make it not streamable for some reason I had, to, I had to capture the whole display so it was a little clunky in that way to try to do it that in that regard but here we are diehard guild wars 2 players oh one question uh, from ours about this. one question from ours before we leave new world uh ours said it's made by amazon why don't they have infinite money to make this the most amazing thing ever and underdark also said wonder if new world will come to prime gaming yeah, it does make you wonder that. Um, so I, I think I think what people have realized at some point is that MMOs as a genre, as a game type, are incredibly expensive to make. They take a long time and a lot of people. But while that is the case, it is not always money that decides a good MMO or not, right? Like you, uh, even though the 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 blueprint for an MMO is probably the most well established blueprint of any genre that's ever existed, right? I mean, like, uh, for a long time in the very beginning, MMOs came out and they were so similar to each other that everything that an MMO could do to try to make itself stand out or to sell itself was to try to somehow be different, radically different. Even if they didn't, even if they weren't improving something, they were just trying to be different from the, from the, the blueprint. Yeah, even, even, even I remember those days. Exactly, exactly. So like, they were like, hey, we're gonna do this totally different. And they're like, we had to go through this this sort of era where games were fixing it even though it wasn't broken you know and so nowadays i think we're sort of coming to a balance with that as uh in a better place 
But just because you have a ton of money and a really well-established blueprint, it doesn't always mean that the game is going to come out good. There's so many other factors to it. MMOs are a giant financial risk. They're really not really, uh, they're, they're not a good investment from an investment side of things. They're very expensive. They take a huge amount of time to do, and they're uh, likely to fail. The ones yeah. that succeed make a lot of money and there's some longevity to it, but those are so few and far between that it's uh, it's an, an enormous gamble to even make these in the first place. Yeah, and I, I would say to add on to that, like um, in my experience, one of the biggest dangers um, in, uh, you know, my experience is software development, but in, you know, development in general, um, and I think it's especially so with game development is, you know, the sunk cost fallacy. Um, and Ed is like triple the case with MMOs, right? Um, and Amazon, we've seen in the past is, at least with their game development, is really on top of cutting off the sunk cost fallacy. They do not mess with about, they've canceled, what, two games already? Like one that was uh, just about to release and then one that was in the works. Just yeah. like, nope, we're done with it. We're not bothering. Mm -hmm. um, so I can very... Blizzard does the same thing. It's the yeah, same kind of thing. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's good on them. Like that shows a company like actually being mindful of, you know, their expenditure and their expenses, um, despite having infinite money. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, I, I think that would be that would be like one of the best answers to, to what Ars was asking about New World, uh, like why they can't just continue to open. You will find very quickly in development that at there there is some point at which more money will not solve the problems you're having. Um, so it doesn't matter how much you throw at a problem, eventually it's, it's going to be a technical or um, a pure development side that has to resolve this and that nothing and else you'll do. In some cases, not even extra time. Uh, unlimited yeah. time and and money cannot take a dead end project and fix it. Um, yeah. One of the one of the best examples of this ever, and I'm sure a lot of you are thinking this as we're talking about it, was Overwatch. This was a game that oh, was yeah. Blizzard, right? Blizzard has unlimited money, especially at the time it was making Overwatch, right? Like it was nothing was in question about Blizzard at that time. Uh, they had all of the resources, all of the best developers, all of the best artists making what should have been the most amazing game ever. And they had, and, and it's Blizzard, so we were just talking about it. They don't mind telling everyone, uh, sorry guys, it's gonna be ready when it's ready. They don't even have an idea of when it's gonna be ready. They don't need to tell you it. They would wait the amount of time until it was done and they had the resources to get away with it. And even still, right before that game was coming to fruition, they were like, uh, you know what guys, beautiful game, awesome world, but the game's not fun. It just isn't coming together the way that we wanted to. It's not fun, we're scrapping the whole thing. And they wasted all of that, but then turned that into uh, into Overwatch, right? They took the resources from it and put it into a different game. But that's a great example of it. If you, Even with all the money in the world and all the time, you can have it go all the way to the end and then still not come to fruition and be absolutely screwed. So, And if anyone chats wondering what Merrick's talking about... Um... Originally, Overwatch was designed to be an MMO. Um, it was supposed to be not necessarily the replacement to WoW, but like, you know, the next big Blizzard MMO. Um, and it was a absolute disaster. Uh, and if you're curious more about the details about it, so we don't spend too much time on it here, uh, I think, was it, uh, uh, what's the gaming company? Um, not, uh, not IGN. Um, one of the other one of the other big gaming journalisms if you just google it or type it into youtube they did a whole documentary series on it um so uh, it's like a two or three parter it's like over an hour long uh, where they interview all the devs and stuff and they, they just talk about you know why did overwatch fail as an mmo um there's mm -hmm. a lot a lot of really interesting things in there um oh also uh darkbringer had mentioned in chat in engineering in up, general darkbringer? hi darkbringer uh, ramping up a team takes a lot of work and resources over time. So, you know, doubling your money, you're looking to double a team size, but that means a whole half of your team is new coming in learning the vision, et cetera, which, you know, it's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah keeping absolutely. it cohesive between an entire team of people, right? Doubling a team can be really scary. It can take things in a direction you're not wanting to. Uh, and in the case of ArenaNet, also having a team, uh, halfing, halfing a team, taking half of the team away can also be really detrimental. So we've seen a lot of things happen to various game developing companies over the years that have really impacted their games. And sometimes things just don't come to be. In fact, I, I, could, I could just do an entire TED talk on the MMO genre in general being such an interesting market to begin with. Uh, unlike every other video game, in the world right if you're like if i'm like hey are you gonna play mario party or zelda 
Like, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? What am I going to play? I'm just going to buy them both. I bought my system. I'll buy both games. But the, the really interesting thing about the marketplace for MMOs is that unlike most other games, 95% of players who play an MMO play one at a time. We're basically vying for a small section of gamers out there who love to play MMOs, right? There, there, there are there are the outliers. There's like Star Trek Online that's played by fans of Star Trek, not MMO players. So there's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Republic who were played by Star Wars fans who will not necessarily go and play the next new MMO. They're not MMO gamers. They just like that franchise. But for the most part, 95% of MMO players are MMO players and they hop from game to game, but they only play one at a time. So every time a new game comes out, it's quite literally directly stealing or trying to steal from the pool of games that already exists. We're getting new MMO players out there. Sure, they're adding uh, some as new people find the genre, but for the most part, unlike most other games, there's a, a specific size pie that each game is taking from. So when one fails, another one succeeds. And when one succeeds, it draws from another. So it really does shape the way that game development happens, uh, game um, marketing happens for the genre in general, which makes it really interesting. When a new game like this comes out, right? Uh, new World, we're like, oh, this is really exciting. And it took, it took some attention off of our game and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other games to look at New World for this week that it was here. And then we're gonna see everybody come back to it. And then the big question is gonna be what happens when it comes out. Um, and so these are things that I think game developers have to think about. And it's really, it's a fascinating world of, uh, of marketing that we live in with MMOs. Uh, what do you think about, uh, Knight put in chat, uh, that the general population uh, isn't necessarily into MMOs and the fact about uh, instant gratification and instant satisfaction and things like Fortnite and other Battle Royale games for kids, that is going to give them that a lot more. MMORPGs are far from instant satisfaction. So are, if you are a new company, you probably don't want to invest that much into an MMORPG these days. Or, uh, what do you think about that and how long it actually takes? Like this is long-term commitment uh, and futuristic satisfaction when you level up. Like how can an MMO combat that? So that's an excellent, excellently worded question. Actually, that's really, really good. And so what my, my take on that is that you're absolutely right. Games these days are really based on uh, a lot of instant gratification. But when you're comparing that to MMOs, that actually makes it seem as though MMOs are separate from that debate, which I do not believe they are. MMOs, as they come out now, new updates for them, new games that come out, are actually entirely built around that instant gratification. Our genre of game is being directly impacted by that, even though we are not uh, Fortnite or whatever, or anything like that. The, our actual game, our genre, our, our blueprint, as I was talking about earlier, has been drastically impacted by the up-and-coming gamer's expectation of instant gratification. And Guild Wars 2 is not an exception. Guild Wars 2 has been out for eight years, right? We're just celebrating our eight-year anniversary, which is fantastic. But this game is so much more uh, instant gratification than the games before it. And if you look at the trend of how our genre has evolved the time investment versus reward uh has changed drastically and consistently in one direction much less investment much bigger reward and what that has done is and this is probably a good analogy for many things in life and how this is how this has come to be but the reward means less right like we all want a legendary that's cool and all but like when you see one and you're like, oh my gosh, that person got that, that's great. Like the games before this, the way that the genre experienced reward prior to this is huge. Uh, it was it was totally different before. The game would make you really work. Like I, like I said, I started back in EverQuest and like way back at the very beginning, the amount of effort it took just to get maximum level uh, garnered you a level of respect. I mean, you really max level uh, people actually got respect from other gamers. If you had the, the big item, if you were able to raid, all these things were huge accomplishments. And uh, I think that it's a really big trade-off that we as a genre are struggling with when we want everything and then we get it all and then realize none of that really we had to work for, which then makes it feel like what is even the point? Like we all complain, we want this, we want that, we want all these things, 
But then all of the hardcores among us, right, who wanted all the things, now we're like, wow, this game's too easy. Not enough challenge. We want harder modes and we want bigger rewards. We find ourselves wanting what we all asked to have removed. So it's, uh, I think we're at like a really interesting uh, apex, the sort of pinnacle of, uh, of this debate in MMO. So we're going to have to decide which direction the genre goes in. Yeah, I, I would also say like um, I, the two biggest genres that MMOs are being influenced by right now are uh, instant gratification games like Fortnite and MMOs, right? Or not uh, 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 mobile games. Um, you know, those are the two biggest uh, genres that are influencing MMOs currently. Uh, we're seeing, you know, more cash shops being installed in MMOs and stuff like that um, and more instant gratification mechanics and stuff like that. But I think all MMOs are still keeping the all important, like the the thing that empowers the majority of like MMOs and loot based games, the carrot on the stick, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I I think it's uh, despite the success of games like Fortnite and stuff, I think it is unfair to underestimate that because we've seen even in games like Fortnite, like they have like a season pass, right? You've got your carrot on the stick, keep playing, keep playing, you'll get you know a, a, this nice shiny thing at the end of the the battle pass or whatever, right? Um, and I think that. Uh, you know, obviously all art is derivative, so people are taking inspiration from everywhere. Um, but Carrot on a Stick is a tried and true method that I think will continue to carry MMOs as long as they continue to pull good ideas and some of them bad ideas, but good ideas um, from these other successful games and genres that we see. Yeah, it's all about getting the balance right, right? Like you have to... Uh... It has to be a meaningful carrot. <laughs> it has to be. Uh, it has to be an achievable carrot, but it also has to be a meaningful one. We have to lots, care about it. Lots of cauliflower is the <laughs> or cauliflower. Lots of cauliflower. <laughs> yeah. But how? I have a question. Um, but how do you balance that? Because you have a lot of different players, right, playing your game, and some of them are going to be frustrated more easily. Some of them are going to be capable of doing something more so than someone else. Uh, somebody will be able to put in the time more. So even just the way like a job, you know, a job ideally is something that's challenging, but not so hard that you're constantly hitting your head against a wall. Oh, you mean uh, Eve Online? <laughs> <laughs> so there are, there are games that are fans. like that. Yeah, there, there are games that are incredibly difficult and that's going to turn people away. I think, I think that's probably the biggest argument that uh, MMOs have for being the way that they are now. Like, there's a lot of us who feel like uh, a an MMO, a game with a bigger challenge, but also bigger rewards for those willing to meet that challenge is something that a lot of us miss or would desire. But for an MMO itself, for from a purely marketing standpoint, and we talked earlier about why that's important, right? Because the games are a big risk. They're oftentimes not successful. They're oftentimes not... Um, monetarily rewarding right that's a big investment and a big gamble they could lose it so they really have to uh it's bred a a mentality of casting the widest net right like they have to be able to grab the biggest amount of that pie i was talking about and so the biggest amount is a more casual player and the more casual player is okay with um I only want to play uh, in like an hour a day, 45 minutes a day, maybe two hours every other day. And I want that amount of effort that I put in to, uh, to be cumulative so that I will get the reward eventually. But what makes it, a, what really makes it a difference is, is that, pl that same player says, I want every reward. I, I want every reward to be accomplished in that way. And so that's, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Like the it, it, Guild Wars 2, and I say this on stream all the time, you guys have heard me say it. Guild Wars 2 is a very casual MMO. We have a, an incredibly casual player base. That is not a bad thing. I think it's actually, uh, it's really cool that games like this exist. I miss games that had rewards for people who put more time in. Uh, you guys have watched me raid time and time again, right? I, I stream raids like every day. I've been raiding for years and years. I have every accomplishment that you can get within the raid scene long since done. So why am I still doing it? I don't I don't know. Uh, it's not like in World of Warcraft or EverQuest or like older games that had, uh, oh, what was that one game? It had like the hardest raiding in it I've ever seen. It was like the most, they just shut oh, it down. Wildstar? Wildstar. Oh, the raiding in Wildstar. Wildstar. Uh, so there, there were games that were like that, right? But like in Guild Wars 2, the hardest content in the game, which is supposed to be raids, right? Like we 
A single group can clear every raid boss in the entire game in four hours, right? That's a fully like uh, reasonable expectation to be able to do for the hardcore base. And they could do that every single day. Whereas uh, that kind of content was gated behind real progression uh, in other games of the past, EverQuest and Wildstar and and uh, even Final Fantasy fourteen, right? Um, and uh, and World of Warcraft. My problem is is that so here's one of my biggest problems. Rating should exist. Hard content should exist. Content that only people who put a lot of effort in should be able to get to. That should exist. The problem I think that some people have with games like World of Warcraft is it's not just the best gear or the coolest skins that are locked behind uh, that skill wall, that skill barrier, uh, or time investment barrier, but the story itself is locked behind that same barrier, right? If you get the new expansion, uh, I'll talk about old stuff so people know what I'm talking about. Wrath of the Lich King comes out, right? Northrend, we're all going to Northrend. Um, Arthas has come to take over. Now we're gonna have a big story. You don't have to raid to get that big story. You can play through the whole thing and that's great. But if you want to kill Arthas, right? If you want the culmination, if you want the finishing touch of that story, where the big cinematic comes and you're the one who ends the, you know, the giant thing, Zaitan is killed in a single player instance at the end of the story. The big bad guy, right? Slain by yourself uh, at the end of a story instance. But in in WoW, in order to slay Zaitan, which in this in this instance is uh, is Arthas, requires a full 25-man raid of like serious grizzled badasses to go in there and take him down. And then you get the giant story like you would normally. Yeah, Night of Dark, spoiler alert. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. If you guys don't know that Arthas is dead, I'm sorry. Um, Wait, you were talking about Zaitan? Thank you, Jimmy Subscribe with the Prime for Thank you so much, but I really appreciate that. Uh, so I think what what changes is that the, the community itself really likes that about Guild Wars 2 in that you can do all the story, uh, all of this cool stuff, and raids are encapsulated, not just in their story, but literally in the world. They're shoved in a tiny little zone, in a little corner of Lion's Arch that you don't ever have to see if you're not a raider. It hasn't and, been uh, updated. Still looks the same. Yes, please, Anet, please. We've been unpacking those same boxes for like five years, please. <laughs> the boxes should be open. We should be we should be fully in effect now. Oh, uh, CV Dazzle said another factor is the progression system in Guild Wars having a hard cap. You have to actively set goals for yourself and find content that you enjoy to get the most out of the yes. game once you get maxed armor, which doesn't take too long. In games that continually raise the level cap or use gear grind, etc., there is a very clear objective for players to latch on to. You are so right about that. In fact, Mighty Teapot, um, I, I heard him talk about this the other day and was really great. He said that there's no um vertical progression in guild wars 2 right you get to that cap you get to where the progression is ended really early and you can do that by doing anything in the game you can get full ascended gear from pvp you can get ascendance from open world you can get it for fractals raids world v world anything you want to do and now that's the essence of a theme park mmo right that's actually a positive thing but once you hit that cap every other bit of progression is a lateral progression horizontal progression you have to set goals for yourself that are not going to increase your efficacy unless you like me consider fashion wars to be a true dps increase that's uh get all the dps increase from your fashion wars. i heard your uh your cold heard your brony cosplay with like 39k thank you ginger nation uh yes yeah. yeah yeah that's why i'm so i'm such a good dps it's because of my uh, yes, my yes. my outfit uh, so you have to either set goals for yourself that are like, you know, um, cosmetic or thematic or role playing or whatever. There's goals for you. And then there's also on the other side of that sort of lateral um, uh, progression is skill. And I think that's where Guild Wars 2 really comes in and really shines, right? I talk a lot about the things that uh, Guild Wars 2 could use to improve, but there are certain things about this game that are stunningly amazing. Uh, take World of Warcraft, right? Uh, if you take a fire mage that is really good and he's like the best fire mage ever in a raid uh doing his rotation right how good of a dps are you and then you take like a mediocre average you know i, I learned it like a couple of weeks ago and i've been started raiding the the fire mage that's an absolute 
you know, badass is going to get better damage than the mediocre one. But not that much, right? Like, it's not that, that much. In Guild Wars 2, the combat system, the, uh, the, the elegance of the combat system is such that you could just keep putting more and more and more effort, more practice. Uh, you're not going to see people sitting in front of the target dummy practicing their fire mage rotation in WoW for, like, weeks and weeks at a time. Like, why would you do that? Uh, in Guild Wars 2, you literally will. You will see people. I mean, you guys have seen me. You've seen Cryptic. Uh, people that, like, live in the SFTA working on rotations because there's always room to improve. The beauty of Guild Wars 2 is that if you do improve, the game will reward you. You are going to look that much better than the guy that didn't put the time in in the SFTA, right? The guy who wasn't practicing. The guy who doesn't raid every day. Uh, when you go through the game in general in Guild Wars 2, anything works. Any build is fine. People come into our streams all the time and they ask like, hey, what, what do you recommend for open world? It's like, well, there are things that are really good for open world, but to be perfectly honest, anything's gonna be fine. And then you have other people who have never raided uh, or done high-end fractals or whatever, and they say, oh, I got the best build. This is the best. This is what works and it's so good. And then you realize like, no, nah, that's kind of a really goofy build that you're talking about. There's much better than that. Yeah, so, the game, sorry, good. Um, so if you, but once you get from open world into raiding, you realize that the entire time that you've been playing this game, even though the floor is here and you've been here and it's been working fine, you've been killing everything, you didn't realize that the ceiling for, for, for efficiency, the ceiling for how good you could be is like way up here. Like you had no clue that the ceiling was so high. And so you, it took, it takes you a while to, to adjust to that. And that's actually one of the most beautiful things about this game, that that kind of progression can be personal, it can be skill-based, and that's not true in every MMO. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the Guild Wars 2 deserves all the credit in the world for uh, the combat and uh, that skill-based progression that you were talking about. Um, it, I Whether, the, the real question for me though is that, is it the game that is showing it? Because the game is facilitating it, but uh, how much is it that, uh, like, Arc DPS, the things that Arena has refused to provide us, that is really what's showing the skill the skill gap and the, the progression there? Um, like, ArenaNet doesn't seem to be fond of advertising people's skill differences. Um, and I think that's one reason why people are, I mean, obviously open world is a lot different, but it's one reason why people are so shocked when they get into raids and see, whoa, look at this huge skill gap that I never knew existed because there's nothing in the game to show it to you. It fully facilitates it, but nothing really lets you know. Yeah, that's that's certainly true. And I think, again, that speaks to ArenaNet knowing its player base, right? I spoke a moment ago about the game itself being incredibly casual, and most people don't really want to have to be confronted with their efficacy you know like sometimes you like uh, here here's a great example this is a great example of this i am a hardcore guild wars 2 raider not not so much anymore but i've done every boss every cm i used to raid like ev like like I, I was in like six statics at the same time i raided every day of the week really 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 into it uh spent all my time in the sfta when i wasn't raiding trying to perfect my dps rotations but here i i, I go to eso and i go to uh world of warcraft and I'm playing WoW on the side right now. We're just playing it casually. Um, I have gone out of my way to not look up the meta build. I've not tried to... What is this? What, what's Sorry, happening? Dark Breaker. Dark Breaker said, why isn't is the required, required cauliflower on Merrick's camera? Well, here it is. Um, I'll just stand here like, uh, like <gasps> Shakespeare. To be or not to be? Cauliflower <laughs> is the question. Um, so, so, uh... Uh, even me, even somebody who raids like that, I've gone through the game now as I'm introducing myself to these other MMOs, not wanting to, uh, not not wanting to spoil it for myself. Like there's an, there's a, a progression for me. While I while I level up, I'm gonna play it in that way. I'm gonna be that filthy casual, as people say, right? I don't want to be confronted with my inefficiency yet. I don't want people to say, you've made all the wrong choices. I don't want to level up and look at my talent tree and be like, ooh, this looks really cool, but I'm not supposed to take that one. I'm supposed to take this one because it's the best choice end game for DPS. This is robbing you of an experience that you only have for a little while. So 
A lot of people in Guild Wars 2 feel exactly that way. They don't want to have to be confronted with their inefficiency. They don't want to have to be told all of the choices that you like to make, all that cool build that you made yourself, that felt awesome, that you got the gear for, that you uh, built synergies around. Uh, that's actually trash, and you need to throw it all away and take this cookie cutter uh, build and then learn that one. Um, so there, there's reason for it. Even 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 World of Warcraft doesn't give you an in-game damage meter. It's an add-on that they allow. Right now, they have a much wider open uh, API, right? Like, you can do anything with, with add-ons in World of Warcraft. Uh, the way that ANET has handled DPS meters, like Arc DPS, isn't great, right? They sort of, like, unofficially deign to allow us to use it as long as we don't talk about it too much. That's that's not the best way to manage that. I agree with that. So there, there should be better handling of it. Uh, two things. First, thank you, Deaxon, for the raid. Really oh, appreciate Deaxon. that. Um, What's up, buddy? And, and secondly, uh, I just want to scroll back up here. Uh, Diamond had said uh, about the fact that, let me see if I can find it, uh, Final Fantasy, actually, 14, um, was constantly, like, pushing against... Um, like being able to complete that. And that's where, uh, here we go. Like the gear treadmill and mandatory harder and harder group content in relation to personal story are two big reasons I left Final Fantasy 14 for Guild Wars mm. 2. So you do get that side of things. Yeah, and that's an incredibly important thing about vertical progression. We were talking a moment ago about horizontal progression that Guild Wars 2 offers and then vertical progression, which is the true, that's the essence of the gear treadmill, right? We hear things like gear treadmill and it sounds really negative and in a way it is. I think that uh, Guild Wars 2 has attracted a lot of players who played WoW and other similar games and then felt like, you know, I've been reduced to a gear score number. And, I, and my gear score number is never going to be what Cryptic's is. Cryptic is too OP. I will never catch him. I will never be able to play in his raid. He's too good. Uh, and so, like, why do I even bother? Why, why do I even, uh, even play? Which is why you see such a big boost to WoW numbers every time a new expansion comes out, because it evens the playing field. When you increase the level cap, all of a sudden you're replacing your legendary equipment with greens and blues and trash that you get from solo quests, and that re levels the playing field with everyone uh eso to uh to a degree has that same sort of thing uh less there's more of a gear progression but the gear treadmill doesn't continue so much final fantasy and wow games that are more old school they genuinely do have that treadmill so for some people it's really toxic they don't want to have to be reduced to a number but and here's what i think everyone in guild wars 2 is used to saying that gear treadmill is bad um, but this is my two cents, and this is what I'd like to convey. I think a lot of people forget what you lose when you trade that. Now, I'm not saying that it's the better way, but it is a trade-off. It isn't just a, you know, we get rid of that and now everything is fixed. Basically, when you are in, uh, I'll just talk about EverQuest, like way back in the day, like my friends and I all got together, played this really hard dungeon, fought our way to the bottom and killed the dragon, managed to defeat it, get the big flaming sword of dragon decapitation or whatever, and you're like, wow, this sword is super cool. It does the effect that now when I slash, it shoots fire out of it, and it's perfect for my build that, I, that I've been working on. Like, oh God, now my, my character's way better. I'm so excited that dropped. There's a really rich experience that is gone when that goes away. You're, you, you still have the dungeon, right? We can all get together and fight to the bottom of Ascalonia Catacombs together and get the win, but are you excited about what the dragon's gonna drop at the bottom of the dungeon? No, of course not. You're gonna, you could drop at very best a yellow item or a, a, uh, an exotic item from something that is uh, a cookie cutter of every other item in the exact same way in the game that just has a couple more stats to it. So the flaming sword of dragon decay, why am I gesturing with cauliflower? Why do I still have this in my hand? Because the uh, cauliflower focus, didn't you hear chat? No. Uh, so so you you rob yourself of the experience of getting that epic experience. So it's uh, there's there's pluses and minuses. To some people that's okay. So to some people they don't care. They don't really need the uh, Wind Fury Blessed Blade of the Wind Seeker or whatever it is from World of Warcraft. That's not a big deal. That the trade off to no gear treadmill is worth it. Which is why again my my argument is always that games like Guild Wars 2 should exist. But there's got to be alternatives as well for other people. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. And I'd love to keep talking about it, but we should move on before yeah, we wrap I this agree. up to uh, the new expansion, uh, Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons. Are you getting cauliflower Throwing thrown at cauliflower you? is dangerous. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, there's a million things we could talk about in this. I think uh, like the way that the genre is shaping up is oh, wait, really you... interesting. Oh, sorry. But... I know I chucked cauliflower at you. Uh, I don't know if you heard Cryptic's class question about End of Dragons. Well, no. I was just gonna say before we oh. wrap up to to sort of close things out with the discussion about End of Dragons that there's so much good meat to talk about here and i want everyone to know that this is not going to be a one-time thing we're going to be continuing these podcasts um my goal would be to reach out to other streamers other content creators people that have other things to say about this and to have it be you know once a week once every other week once a month depending on how interested people are in this kind of content uh get other streamers to come on and talk about what's happening in their side of the world their community their stream uh so it could be it could be awesome we come back next time. I won't have an eternity next time, though. Sorry. This is my last eternity. <laughs> uh, you might. Who knows? Who knows? Um, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, real quick, though, we'll wrap up with a bit of talk about Ender Dragon. So, uh, obviously, new expansion coming out next year. Um, probably mid to late next year would be my Woo! guess. Some people are speculating early. I, I don't think. I think it's going to be late 2021. Um, you got to build in for delays. Uh, but we've had a trailer drop. That was pretty awesome. Yes. Um, teaser, teaser. So yeah, teaser, teaser, some teaser images. Um, we can probably talk more about like the story and lore and stuff later. I know like anybody that's curious, Wooden Potatoes is putting out videos like like that right now. So if you want to know more about like the Cantha story, Guild Wars 1, the characters that are involved, go check out his channel. Um, uh, they knows way more about it than I think the collective of us three here because I didn't play Guild Wars 1 and you two missed that expansion, right? The Cantha stuff. Yep. Yeah. You have not played so, it at all. But um, shout out. I'm just going to I'm going to shout myself out. Judy and I are actually going to be doing a Cantha playthrough of Guild yeah. Wars 1. We're going to be streaming that uh, once a week all the way until the expansion comes out. So we'll be trying to get through it. If you're curious about the game, if you want to play with us or just watch the story unfold for Cantha, uh, we're going to be doing it from beginning to end. Stream the whole the whole time. I will say you're in for a shock because Kunaveng's voice is way different in Guild Wars 1 than uh, in the teaser. Uh, I looked it up immediately because I remember like watching Teapot play Guild Wars, or not Teapot, uh, Wooden Potatoes play Guild Wars 1. Um, and I was like, this doesn't sound right. And yeah, they, they changed voice actors or something. But uh, that's to be but expected. the voice in the teaser was so cool. It was. <laughs> it was. Actually it was. An awesome voice. It, it really was. Um, but... Let's talk about some more like mechanical things about uh, Guild Wars 2 and specifically what's going on at End of Dragons. Um, two things I want to touch on. One, uh, how much underwater content do you think is going to be coming to End of Dragons? I know that's the huge speculation right now. People are expecting there to be a lot of underwater stuff. If you have seen the precursor and legendary prices increasing for the two underwater legendaries, yep. Uh, yep. I know the precursors have gone up by like from like 50 gold to like, I think it's like over 300 at this point uh, we've given away um, a couple in the last couple of weeks so yeah. I've, I've watched it yeah yeah um you can blame enko for a lot of that uh, <laughs> um i don't know how much the legendaries have gone up but i know they have gone up um so i mean i know a lot of people were expecting it we had the skimmer come with the underwater stuff so they're building up to it uh it seems like the jade sea is still a thing though so how much underwater content are we actually going to get and how much do you actually want uh, that's actually a really good question. It's going to make me very unpopular. I, I think that uh, Underwater was just done poorly in the beginning, really poorly. It shaped a really big community out, like, 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 uh, like, like, dripping with disdain. People just cannot stand the thought of Underwater Combat, but not because it is Underwater Combat. It's because of their previous experience with it. And I can tell you that's a fact, because when the game first came out, Everyone was excited about it. Do you guys remember like the oh, hype yeah. about the underwater stuff? Like that was big. Everyone loved the idea. Underwater weapons, underwater skills, uh, the way that it would be very different from on land. But the problem was it was done horribly. Uh, and they have made uh, attempts to try to fix it between the beginning and now. And that's great. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I only raid. I don't really know if the upgrades to it have been successful i genuinely don't know but i can tell you that what i would like to see is more underwater combat i know people are gonna are gonna lynch me right now but i like the the idea of the underwater skimmer 
I like the idea of um, underwater feeling like a different elite spec. Like you, your character changes drastically. In fact, one of my one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite skill animations and uh, and uh, uh, qualities of any class in in this game is underwater mesmer that turns into like a bard. You seen the uh, like the the musical stuff from the the trident? Is it mm -hmm. something like yep. that? Like the the theme behind all that is so cool. And if they really uh, oh, and the engineer with like you have I the was about to say, that are floating with yeah, so with many little cool balloons. Things. Yeah, yeah, it's so dude. cool. It's so cool. It's a it's a good opportunity to make something really good, but it has to be done really really well. So you want my advice? Uh, you want you want my opinion on how it should go? I think there should be more of it the jade sea sounds amazing like the thought of having to do underwater stuff and actually have it be fun is more exciting than a lot of other things i think it would be great self-fit glasses said that's how i look at it too it's harder but harder shouldn't mean bad that's absolutely true i i yeah. I, that. I actually really liked underwater combat it's what originally brought me to guild wars 2 was the fact that they had underwater combat and i remember seeing one of their hype videos like back in the summer of what 2014 or no 2012 and um oh, and that was big goal for me and that's actually why i came to the game and it's unfortunate that it wasn't implemented as well but i think a lot of that has to do with um like the physics and and the movement and everything and they have put in a lot of uh fix well and half of your character's that. skills not working and oh, and right. going so slow underwater there I mean, there were so many things right. but like um they said like it's not a it doesn't matter if it's harder it just shouldn't be um frustrating so as long as things are smooth and they feel like you're in control of your character and your skills it can be hard and i think that's always been the issue for me like i only get frustrated with games when i feel like i don't have proper control of my character yeah i actually agree with that um and uh i definitely i would definitely like that to uh, be like the kind of direction they had but my concern is that we're going to see the same thing with underwater combat that we've seen in guild wars this entire lifespan where it seems like half the development team is trying to support it and make it better and the other half is trying to remove it from the game uh and i'm concerned that the same mm -hmm. thing's going to happen in the cantha expansion because we know it's not going to be it's not the underwater expansion like that website right like the that fan-made website oh man that website was so good you it was know so what good talking about? It was so amazing. good uh, you can still find it, I think, somewhere out there if you uh, if you look it up. Um, that but fake, it was a fake. Uh, it was somebody who did it as a, just sort of like a fan project. Job, they made basically. a fake thing. And if you went and looked yeah. up in the HTML, it said, read it up, please hire me. <laughs> it's really it's, good. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean, if it was a dedicated underwater expansion, I think my faith would go up to like 90% that this would be the underwater content that we've always dreamed it to be. Um, there maybe it is, even higher than nice. that. But because it's going to be, and we don't know, it could be zero underwater content, but if there is, it, it's going to undoubtedly, undoubtedly be a split content thing, right? Um, how much does that like affect the end product? You know, I'm very concerned that it'll be the same as the rest of Guild Wars 2, which is, you know, like I said, half the dev team wants to remove underwater combat, the other half wants to make it the, the thing that they always wanted it to be. Yeah, it does feel like they've been... Uh not always completely cohesive they're, they're not always sort of backing the same direction and i think uh i think like the various little things we gleaned from the giant uh re what would you call that like a reshuffling of arena net uh mm -hmm. structuring restructuring yeah. restructuring uh we we got we kind of got that right wasn't that the vibe that you got that it felt like a net was sort of all over the place there was all these different projects they were working on uh not all of them were coming to fruition not everyone was on the same page so nc soft was trying to sort of like recenter them on some things not that we know i have no idea what's really went on there i i experienced mostly sympathy to be honest for for the employees mm -hmm. there and how much that must have been devastating and for oh, yeah. us as the game players with uh our entire game sort of in question all of a sudden but i think uh ho my hope would be that now they're very centered ho hopefully very uh especially behind a giant expansion now right this isn't just random team working on this random team working on that they're, they're coming out with a new expansion with a hopefully a cohesive direction so my my hope would be that it's good but i do agree i do agree i think uh Anet is not always great at making like strong stances on something and then 
going with it, you know. Uh, the, the Especially something like Underwater, right? Which is an incredibly divisive topic. <laughs> like, is. I have expected, I, I, I literally expected half of the chat to erupt when I said uh, Underwater would be cool. You know, like, I've seen yeah. giant arguments about stuff like that. So, you know, I, I can see how it might be a difficult subject to broach. But here I am right now, sitting in one of the starting zones of the game. And I remember getting here right when the game came out, eight freaking years ago, dude, and hopping mm -hmm. in the water and being super excited to see what happened to my skills. And uh, I don't know, man. I still have high hopes. I believe. I believe in ANET, man. You guys, uh, yeah. I think you guys are great. You can do this. And on that note, before we end, we should talk about uh, End of Dragons in a bit of positive light. Uh, what... Uh, what are your expectations for End of Dragons? Um, I mean, obviously for me, I think it needs to release Elite with Elite Specs! Elite Specs, definitely. Great Sword Rev. Any Anet people watching? Great Sword <laughs> Rev. Make it happen. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, or if at least I'll take secondary, secondary Elite Spec would be um, dual uh, two-handed weapon uh, warrior, right? Mm. Right? Mm, um, yeah, yeah, Titan's Grip Warrior. Uh, yes. One, one two-hander in each weapon. Hundred percent. I want to be Zamoros. I want to make <laughs> Zamoros. I want to be. I want to take Zamoros away from Nessie and make the proper Zamoros. <laughs> yes, yes, I feel that for uh, sure. But uh, no, no, no. Uh, player housing is a big thing for me. I want there to it is. real. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah. yeah player I housing. want real. I want ESO player housing. Give me yes. that, and I will. I will never stop playing Guild Wars Two. No, no. Um, okay, so this is a whole. You could do a whole podcast on just this. So player yes, housing and 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 Guild Wars Two player base. There are certain games out there where the player base could care less if there's player housing. Guild Wars 2 is not one of them. Guild Wars 2 player base would freaking love player housing. And the, the payment Absolutely. model for this game, the gen store, I mean, give me a break. It's perfect. designed for it, guys. Yeah, perfect. Like, come out with player housing and then sell uh, housing items on the, you know, we'll pay gems for that. I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, the community in this game, that very role-playing, casual, uh, you know, friendly... Uh, don't prove me wrong, guys. Be friendly. Uh, you know, community <laughs> behind Guild Wars 2 would be thrilled for player housing. Absolutely thrilled. So please, that would be a big one. That'd be a and big like one. you said, it would be a huge cash influx for Net. Not only, obviously, the expansion aside, but like the player housing in the cash shop. I would mm -hmm. bet, you know, large amounts of money that aside from the loot boxes in ESO, the thing that brings in the most money from the cash shop, loot boxes aside, is housing. the housing stuff. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. The houses themselves and the housing items themselves. And the items, yep, yep. Those yeah. two combined probably outshine everything else by miles with the exception of loot boxes, because yeah, loot boxes. Um, in front of us from day one, I remember you know, starting my first character, going yeah. to Divinity's Reach, walking into the, the housing district, and seeing a door that was openable and thought like, oh, this is it. And then, you know, nothing really came of it. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things, if Anet Marketing is listening, that I think you guys could make a lot of money from. One is player housing for sure. That'd probably be number one. Uh, two, this is two. Two, uh, anybody here play Path of Exile? Uh, uh, Path of Exile has I what I think is the coolest idea ever for Guild Wars 2 which is cosmetic reskins of abilities. Abilities looking oh, differently wow. based on a skin that you purchase from the cash shop. So here's, uh, I'll give you a great example. Um, I am a Silvari, no, no, no. I, I am a uh, an Asura engineer. I think to myself, I love the idea of an Asura engineer. That goes perfectly together. Uh, this is gonna be great. So I look around, I see all of the Asura and Magitek all over uh, Radasum, and then I summon my turret. And it's a hunk of junk. It looks like it should have been built in a scrapyard in, uh, in, in, in a garbage <laughs> heap in the back of the Black Citadel. You know what I'm saying? It is yeah. not meant for my Asura and Engineer. So, yeah, but uh, Mr. Wug, yeah, Char Engie, for sure. Char Engie fits all of the aesthetic that you get. But if you're going to play a uh, Silvari, uh, it would be really cool to get seed turrets, you know, if you're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you don't have to just do this out of the out of the kindness of your heart. This is stuff I would buy. This is stuff I promise you everyone would buy and then just disable it in PvP and World v. World. No big deal. Yeah, and then the inverse is true, too, right? Think of the player. 
that created an engineer at launch, right? And said, I and saw the aesthetic and said, I'm going to make this a char engineer, full on yeah. char engineer. And then Hollow Smith comes out and it's a Soren. It's entirely not char at all. 100%. Right? Yeah, that's true. They, they are now also super invested in keeping their char engineer going and will pay for all of these things that make them look like more, you know, look, a Hollow Smith have char engineer, like, you know, Prime Light Beam is like this big, gigantic flamethrower or something, right? Yeah. There's, un there's unlimited ideas for it. If you guys want to see how well it can be done, go look at POE. Go look at Path of Exile. It's really amazing. Well, I'm also even, I'm seeing about, wow. I'm seeing other people's responses in the chat, and I 100% agree with you, was, which is why at the end of my my little speech there I said just disable it in PV PVP and World v World because you would have to. Uh, it would be completely unfair. People do recognize skills based on their animations, but even still, uh, there's a lot of things that you can buy from the gem store now that can't be used in PVP. Uh, so it's that's not to say that they sh still shouldn't do it. But I agree. Yes, Brick, we're still on the same page, bro. <laughs> I get it. Totally agree. We would not want that um, mucking things up in PVP in competitive modes. And other other com super competitive games, take uh, League of Legends for example, right? They have skins that drastically, entirely alter the look of all the abilities of the you know different champions. So it's not like it can't be done. And when they go overboard, uh, you know, they ban those skins from competitive modes, right? So. Uh, I, I think there's a balancing. I think you nailed it, right? Just don't, just ban, don't let it in PvP and just World disable World. it. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so the very last thing, uh, still on, you know, desires for the ex expansion before we wrap up, uh, is uh, NPC companions. Any thoughts on that? I really want it. I want Guild Wars One. You mean Guild NPC Wars One? Yeah, yes, dude. Uh, oh man, you mean like you, you mean like customizable? Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So one, it would give you Heroes. something to use your gear on, right? Mm -hmm. You get you get these heroes. You can now put all that ascended gear that you've been hoarding since the beginning of raids. Yeah, dude, you can throw it on all those buddies. characters. Yeah, man. exactly. They're all gonna want builds. You can, they're gonna want healing builds. They're gonna want damage builds. They're gonna want all that stuff. So so uh, there's a. Uh... I, I totally get what you mean, and when I go back to play Guild Wars 1, it's actually one of the biggest attractive elements to it. I think that it's an incredible uh, way to tell story, first of all. It actually makes it feel more like a, fi like a Final Fantasy, yeah. like a, like a single-player RPG, uh, which is yeah, amazing definitely. to allow you to go through the game in that way. Um, I would say that there's a flip side to it as well, which is the same effect that it had in Guild Wars 1 that makes the game encourage that like almost it makes it a more lonely game like you are uh it's really possible to not interact with people and so is that a positive thing for an mmo not always so my my guess would be or my, my take on it would be that it would be a really good idea it would be a, a wonderful throwback to guild wars one give a lot of extra systems and flexibility in a way that is brand new that we've never seen in guild wars 2 which would be really exciting mm -hmm. to do like you said gear them design them fashion wars more them. cash I mean, shop all of it stuff could be fun dude yeah like, i don't know if anybody ever played sto uh star trek online but you have your whole away team that you kind of fashion wars as well it's kind of fun to do that so there's there's a lot of cool things about it but it cannot it couldn't be allowed to be taken into like fractals and raids and things. You'd have to be really careful about the implementation of it so that, so as not to uh, further break down the need to interact with other humans in a massively multiplayer online game, which yeah, is absolutely. something that I think the genre itself is always struggling with at this point. I think like world boss encounters, will v world, PVP, raids, fractals, they'd have to be disabled and all that. Um, you know, when you get close to a world boss, when a world boss is spawned and you start walking up close to it, they just disappear. Yeah. Um, there are ways to do it, is basically what we're yeah, saying. There are ways exactly. to do it that would uh, alleviate some concern, uh, but then also bring a cool system back to the game. So there's no knowing if they'll do it or not, uh, yeah. but I could see that as something that could be cool. And like I said, more gem store things, more long-term income for the game. So mm -hmm. I, I would like, so my big thing for this expansion always uh, is elite specializations. I think elite specs breathe new life into the game. Um, I, I've famously said in the past, like, if they didn't didn't even come out with a new expansion, but said instead, guys, we're coming out with three elite specs for each class. I'd be like, well, that's good. I'm, I'll buy it. Fifty bucks. <laughs> you got it. No, no problem. <laughs> that's content for Merrick TV. I think uh, additional additional elite specs breathe life into the game in a way that nothing else does it is unlimited replayability every time somebody gets to that point and they want to try this new build this new spec this new whatever like that is where the uh the lasting excitement comes in and the di diversity of each of the amazing classes that anet has made um 
from the beginning of this game. Like, uh, you know, I always talk about how Mesmer is so unique and amazing that it's completely unique to Anet and Guild Wars 2, but somehow still so iconic and tangible. It feels like it's always existed, even though it hasn't. It feels archetypal, even though it's, uh, you know, completely arbitrary to just this one game. And I love that. And branching out farther in that with Chronomancer and Mirage, you guys have to admit, like, they've been terribly successful in the Elite Specialization Editions for every class that has come out, right? Uh, except maybe Spellbreaker. Weird. Spellbreaker's a little weird. But I mean, everything else is just great, right? Like, I think that they've done a really... And, and even with Spellbreaker, thematically, uh, lore-wise, and even the way that the skill use is... I, I, hey, I like, I like Dead Eye, man. Uh, it, it adds so much. So I'm very excited to do that. I'm really thrilled to experience a new world, a new story, like an absolutely fresh story, right? We're not going back. We're going forward here. And that feels really good. Uh, it's not just an addition to the story that's already there. I think we're going to see some really new things here and we'll get to experience it with new elite specs if everything goes according to plan. And, uh... I'm I'm freaking excited, guys. Aren't you aren't you thrilled? I just want to end this on a really positive note. Aren't you guys so excited to be given something tangible? Lacantha confirmed. I got goosebumps, dude, when the, when that thing ended. Just hearing them say the words, Cantha confirmed. Yeah, it's absolutely huge, you guys. Can we get some big big hype for this? We weren't sure we were ever getting another. Uh, expansion again we didn't know we'd ever see another elite spec this is enormous this is our community coming together right now for something that is going to be incredibly exciting so i don't know about you i haven't been this excited about guild wars 2 in a long time this is a great place to be a great community to be here with and uh and a lot of exciting things to come yeah and, and people were saying in chat that um spellbreaker is good in pvp so like arena net is to be absolutely commended for uh, their dedication to the elite specs. They have stuck with that and have done an amazing job. Um, and then, of course, the dedication to expansions that we thought they had given up on, but yeah. they absolutely have not. And they've, they're going to give the community what, we, what we've what we been asking for, and it's going to be amazing. And we're all super hyped about it. So Yeah, it's big, man. It's big. It's big. It's big. Um, and I guess on that, on that really yeah. high, like excellent to, note. Uh, Mary, yeah? I'd like to say uh, one or two things. Okay. Um, for coffee break, uh, we uh, we plan to do this again, yes. and um, you know we have a bunch of topics that we're planning. But uh, I'm going to create a special channel in our Discord, and we can take content suggestions because we'd love to hear what everyone is interested in in seeing. So we can start implementing that into some of our future coffee breaks. That's actually a great idea. You guys can reflect on the conversation that we had here today. If you have anything else you want to share, you want to discuss, and then maybe future topics for us to talk about. Uh, if you guys are interested in this, if you liked this format, uh, we're, we are super happy to do it again. I love the genre of MMOs. I love this game. And you guys know I love all of you. I love the community who plays it. Interaction like this is incredibly positive. I want to thank uh, uh, Darkbringer for coming and hanging out with us today in chat. Even just that, that's an ArenaNet employee coming and hanging out, listening to the conversation about this, even interacting in chat with some things. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I already talked to another streamer who said that they would be interested in coming and talking next time we do this. So if this is something you guys like, we'll bring in different streamers, different personalities, uh, different content creators, and then maybe someday even Darkbringer or an ArenaNet employee in general would be super awesome. So uh, stay tuned for that, guys. Lots of exciting things. Uh, By the way... One, sorry, one more cauliflower-related thing. Yes, of course. So, um, I know we have to cut this stream... Uh, done soon but i believe Merrick, you have a bunch of cauliflower in your mail so next stream for anybody who's been following enko's amazing cauliflower you know we have cauliflower in our real lives in our home now but Merrick is going to have to open the thousands and thousands and thousands of mails that enko has sent him well, our to. next stream our next stream tomorrow stop by and just watch because oh god it's not gonna be great it's not gonna be pretty guys it's not gonna be pretty 
Uh, if anyone is brand new here, hey, I want to shout out, first of all, uh, Mighty Teapot and Deaxon. Thank you guys so much for the raids today. Dropping extra viewers in here to join in on the conversation. Really, really cool of both of you. I love you both. Uh, fellow members of Delusional Elitist Stream Team, guys. So, very exciting stuff. If you are new, my name is Merrick TV. I stream Guild Wars 2 almost every day of the week. Uh, love this game. Love interacting with my chat. So, hopefully you guys will come back for some of the other exciting things we're doing right now. We're doing a level 1 to 80 Iron Man hardcore challenge where if I get to level 80, someone's uh, sponsored me. We're going to give away legendaries and stuff uh, if I get to level 80. But if I die, I have to delete. So, it's going to be pretty exciting. We're also going to be doing our Guild Wars 1 playthrough of Kantha pretty soon, so that's going to be happening on stream. If you guys are interested in any of this, or the copy break in general, follow, subscribe, really supports the channel, guys. Really amazing stuff. It's what allows us to do this every day. So we love you very much. Thank you all, and get ready to see who wins an eternity and 150 gold, guys. Hype, it's right hype, now. Hype. Oh, and don't forget cauliflower, too. You need to start dumping that now. So No. Uh, I mean, have some have the mail. Take a look at your mail, Barry. There's <laughs> a lot in there. I, I don't know if it's ever going to end. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. I expect uh, cauliflower soup and a bunch of other stuff made with all this cauliflower you've received. Oh, there's going to be a lot of things. We could try to make cauliflower soup. That could, that could actually yeah. happen. Okay, guys. Last chance to get in there. Exclamation point enter or exclamation point rigged in the chat. Also type. Actually, don't type. I'm just going to click this button. Well, bam, join that Discord, guys. Join the Merrick, it's just gone now, it's all been spammed. Uh, join the Merrick TV Discord. Uh, it's where I coordinate what I stream, when I stream it, who I stream it with, and what we're gonna be talking about when it comes to future coffee breaks. Also, delusional elitist stream team and Discord, guys, make sure you join it. Come and join in on the fun. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of the content creators, hopefully, talking with us in the future. So, uh, lots to look forward to, guys. Should be very exciting. Yeah, thanks again, Merrick and Junie. It was an absolute blast. Dude, thank you, Cryptic. Thank you, Cryptic, for hosting this amazing first Coffee Break pilot episode. Also, first uh, face reveal of Cryptic Villain. First face reveal yeah, of Cryptic. It's not strictly true, but sure, we'll go with it. Yeah, first, first, first ever. First ever. Okay. No one in his whole life has seen his face until today. It's a, it's a big day. It's a big day. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was interesting, you know, the cursor kept poking me in the face, so I had to deal, you know. Dude, that was... at least you didn't have real Merrick <laughs> finger poking you in the face. <laughs>150 gold was donated by Zomp, and the Eternity was donated by Aza and Associates. Aza and Associates. Other people who contributed to try to make this an even bigger giveaway. So huge shout out to them. Thank you guys so much for making this stream a better place. Follow, subscribe, guys. Get in there. Support the channel. We love you. And time to win. An Eternity. Let's go. Here it is. The winner is... <gasps> Who is it? Dude! <laughs> dude! Grats, dude! Congratulations! Being you fluffy just... unicorns dancing on rainbows. <laughs> Being fluffy unicorns dancing so, on rainbows. Thank you so much for donating your Twitch Prime. I know you only get one of those and you decided to give it to us here at Merit TV and we love you for it. Thank you so much. You look fabulous today. Uh, very handsome. Very handsome. Uh, congratulations to our friend, uh, Dude. Are you in the chat, man? Dutenum. Dutenum. Uh, anybody see Dut? You just won uh, way too much money, dude. Way, way too much. Way too much in a single giveaway. Uh, you don't have it, huh? I have it? You have it, Mary. He's there. Look He's at all this there. Woo. He's in chat. He's in chat. He's in chat. He says, I'm... <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> That was great, dude. Uh, yes, congratulations. We're about to send that out. Thank you guys again. Don't forget, I will be streaming again tomorrow. I'll probably be continuing my Zero to Hero Iron Man uh, hardcore challenge, where if I die, I delete the game from my computer forever. 
which uh, okay, you know, it's very sad. Saying things, but that's not actually. It's just yeah. a uh, character. World of Warcraft <laughs> main for life after that. So uh, it's very sad. Hopefully, I never die. Please, please come and protect me. Uh, dude, did we get dude's thing? Uh, looking in chat. In game now. name. Your IGN, dude. I need your IGN, your in game name, dude. Type it in chat so that we all see that it is in fact you. I actually had somebody once try to try to steal steal a win, even though they didn't win. AFK rigged reroll. <laughs> um, okay, guys, I am gonna be raiding another streamer right now. You know who it's gonna be. I know who it's gonna be. I know exactly who it's gonna be. Also, Marek, you have won the cauliflower giveaway, so CV Dazzle, that is so true. Mm. Nice, nice. There he is, there's dude. All right, guys, we are going to raid none other, none other than my man, Isa. Okay, he's the one who donated this giveaway along with other people. So Isa's amazing, N-A-D-L organizer, guys. I don't know what we would do without him. Make sure to drop him a follow when you get there. Show some Merrick TV hype in the chat. I love to see that love. Make sure to show him some love too. Here it is, Def Defro. Fro you dot eight seven zero zero. Send it to my brother's account. Oh my gosh, you are so generous. You're giving this to your brother. That's it, right? Uh, and one hundred and fifty gold. Yeah. yeah. Done. All right, guys. We love you all. Oh, have a great. Oh, well done. You have to also send him cauliflower. Come on. You interrupted yeah. my great <laughs> outro. I was all excited you gotta and stuff. Send cauliflower. Okay. Bam. That is really, really nice of you, dude. That's really nice. All right, guys. You're all awesome. You're all beautiful. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you join the Discord. Join in on the conversation. Get involved. We want you there. We love you. Stay virus-free. I'll see you guys next time.